Hello, my name is Alexandra and you're with Brave New World, a channel in which we discuss fashion, sustainability and minimalism. Today I would like to talk you through the core of Quiet Luxury, one of the biggest uh, trends this season and help you individualize garments that reflect this style. If you're a regular on this channel, you surely know already I'm not much about the strict following style rules, but mostly about giving you the instruments to unlock certain styles and adapt them to your own taste and wardrobe. And this is exactly what I will do at the end of this video, in which I will show you as well the adaptation of Quiet Luxury to my own lifestyle. I think there are plenty of videos already that explain origins of Quiet Luxury, uh, modern inspirations such as TV shows, people who nailed this style and why, so I will not talk about that. Instead, we will see a few points that will help to understand better the core of quite luxury style. Garments and colors to use, but also misconceptions, sustainability and exaggerations linked to it. If you feel one chapter is not that appealing to you, feel free to skip to the next one. How do I think any next chapter uh, is a process of the previous one, but you do whatever makes you feel better. And before starting, let me just say a big thank you for watching this video. Every like, comment and subscribe you do on this channel can only support and motivate me to do more. So yeah, thank you. <laughs> And here are the misconceptions about quiet luxury. I've heard many people call it dressing with discretion, modest or every man clothing. Dressing with discretion, well, dressing with discretion is something that depends on the circumstances. The same outfit could, be, could look very boring, and Dolce and Gabbana as usual catwalk, imagine all the sexy lace and roses, or very out of place and disrespectful if you visit the Vatican's gardens, for example. So, quiet luxury could be discreet, but not necessarily. Modest. Modest is a word I personally never liked. I always felt like if you say about someone or something, ah, oh, they are so modest, it's either because you see no qualities in this person at all or classify them as not even worthy to come to know the personality. And this particular style is so much more than that, every man clothing. I know it is supposed to feel inclusive, but somehow it doesn't. Every man clothes is broad terming and means nothing, again, out of context. Every man clothing in Italy, for example, uh, would be much different than the everyman clothing in Switzerland. And I give this example because I lived in both countries, so I don't think I ever saw the same everyman as they are shaped by different cultural backgrounds. However, there are some everyman staple pieces that would look equally fitting more than one generation or country wardrobe. But we will see that later on. Why wearing white luxury? It's not about dressing modestly, but about dressing powerful. Powerful, not linked to the buying possibility of your bank account. Powerful, because you are comfortable with what you wear, and what you wear is not an obstacle for your daily routine and activities, but a neutral field for it. You feel powerful with what you wear when those clothes don't obstacle, but contribute to your social performance. If you look online for it, you will probably read it's popular among people who would like to draw attention away from their wealth. And to do that, they use regular anonymous clothes. Now, this is a word I like in this context, anonymous. And if you feel uncomfortable about wearing anonymous clothes, think about this. Clothes can never look anonymous combined with a sparkling personality. They can only exalt it. Quite luxury is the name of a trend, as in the last couple of years, this style reached a larger audience and more people talk about it. But it's actually much more than a trend. It's a lifestyle characterized by bonton wear, where nothing is too much, nothing is not enough, everything is settled, everything is balanced. Clouding is like a mantra for a lifestyle. Quiet luxury is a long life trend because it's characterized by garments that you have already seen. Garments 
that if you pull out from the catwalk and put on a hanger by itself, wouldn't look like that brand at all, but could be any brand. So yes, anonymous. Meanwhile, you can find an enormous range of products and prices that will fit the quiet luxury style. There is one component that is driven and uncompromisable, and this is quality. Our clothes are part of our legacy. It's a lesson I've learned recently, but has been seeded in me uh, many, many years ago from uh, an article in the Italian Vogue about Charlotte Casiraghi, Princess of Monaco. Um, I leave you down in the description link to that video. It's just the beginning of the video if you're interested on, to know more. The point is that clothes are part of what we leave behind and they talk a lot about our life choices. So naturally, it's better to choose high quality garments that might look expensive on the first sight, but will last in time. And consequently, we will make a better investment of your money. Which brings me to the next point, sustainability. Buying every year a countless number of low quality and low prices clothes is a waste. Literally, the fashion industry produces 100 billion garments yearly, of which 70% reach landfill in the same year. Big brands, on the other side, big luxury brands, burn yearly merchandise that hasn't been sold for billions every year. It's enormous massive pollution and a threat to the life on this planet. So instead of buying 10 new sweaters this winter, buy one, but make sure it's a high quality one and you will cherish it for decades. This is what quad luxury is about. And no, you don't have to spend uh, thousands for a sweater. In the description, you can find my favorite sustainable brands that have a great price quality ratio, especially there's one that is absolutely uh, See well. What have we learned so far about quiet luxury? It's minimalist driven, qualitative, anonymous, inclusive and reassuring. For this winter season, if I choose to wear a tight skirt, even if it looks very flattering in me, tight skirt limits the movement, requires ties, special boots and so more accessories must be added and it starts to become too many things, overwhelming and not that minimalist. But minimalism is the base of quiet luxury. It's about the self-realization of having everything and being enough. Anything else is unnecessary and distracts you or others from your purpose. Okay, we saw that a short skirt is not a garment we have in the quiet luxury wardrobe. But what is it then? If I choose to wear a long or a midi skirt that is in wool or wool blend, I'm in the right direction. However, I should keep in mind to pick a timeless garment. How to do that? Remember about the anonymous talk we had? Color-wise, my skirt should be in light or deep color nuances, nothing too bright with discrete details that can be something or can be nothing. You know what I mean? Uh, I talk about the kind of details that are, it's there, it's not there, like a deep split or self-fabric belt, an example. How to choose a timeless garment. None of the clothes you will see me wearing in this video have been brought recently or um, just for the purpose of making um, this video. All the garments you see, I had already. Some of them since many, many years. And all of them I see myself wearing in the long distance future. How to choose a timeless garment? Well, what's timeless for me might not have the same value for you. An example, padded shoulder blazer has been on and off through the years and is definitely a quite luxury must have but I never liked padded shoulders so I don't have one and I don't plan to buy one anytime soon. Make sure you're clear what you like to wear in general and fits this style rather than buying something that looks cool now but in a couple of years you wouldn't like. And this brings me to the next point, colors. <laughs> I hear many people say regarding quite luxury, you should not wear certain colors as red, an example, if you want to reach this style outlook. Well, that's not true, not at all, actually. I'm a designer, so I worked with color palettes, picked colors, gave comments and rejected or approved colors. And I'm a painter, which means I mix colors and use them to uh, give emotions or evoke other colors that are maybe not even present on the canvas. 
I don't say that to brag, but trust me when I say I do know something about color. And what I know is that there is no color that you cannot use in almost any occasion. I believe it's the moment to make a difference between color and the nuance, because red is a color, burgundy is a nuance. So if you like red, you can still do you and be quite luxury, just make sure to pick the right nuance. And if you want absolutely that bright Scorsese red, just make sure you wear it on a turtleneck with your tailored beige padded loose blazer, same color pants and you're good to go. Because if this is what feels right for you, you're entitled to prism any style through your own perspective and personality. Skirts and shorts length starts from the knee and below. Nothing is too tight. Loose pants, loose shirts, comfortable outwear. Jackets are tailored and the details are in accessories. As the right length to the garment scarf and the right width of a belt. Color combinations are around neutrals and monochromes. Fabrics are long-lasting and small details such as finishings and double side fabrics are more important than a branding logo that completely disappears here. These are the basic signals for a quiet luxury, but from there on it's up to you to make it yours and to own it. Because if you don't, it will remain only an outfit you style, uh, take a picture and post it on Instagram uh, with the hashtag quite luxury or still wealth or whatever. And the day after, you would post another one with logos all around, do it on back, etc. etc. So don't do it just because it's trendy right now. There is a lot to learn from this style, like intentional living, like minimalism. But you don't have to follow blindly everything. Take only what you like. Once I read something about Karol Lagerfeld, one of my favorite designers of all time, he wrote something like, um, when a person is young, they can put anything on because essentially they're wearing their youth. But youth vanishes one day. So what remains for you if you wear elegance elegance will always remain, even when your youth is perished. I cannot personally find a better way to describe this style, so enjoy my selection of quite luxury. My selection includes one long wool coat in beige color, one maxi dress in recycled cotton and with a small split in front in grey color, one ankle length wool blend skirt with a deep but discreet split on the front side sustainable brand, one white leg cotton corduroy pants in black, Two leather shirts, one leather shirt, fake leather actually, in warm brown color and one leather jacket in white with a very minimalist look. Both of them I designed, by the way, one loose sweater in a warm neutral color. I picked it because of its boat shaped neckline, which was the signature of Karol Lagerfeld in Chanel in the tailoring section. And I want to tell you exactly this, small details that might look anonymous make a big difference and can elevate your style. Moving forward, I have one silk shirt in black color, again one of my designs, one poplin oversized shirt, three Dolce Vita, one half turtleneck in an off-white color with a play of the rib pattern, one in Leo in optical white and one in discreet color block rib where we have cream in the top part and black in the lower part, three sleeveless tops, one in black rib that looks really standard and nothing special at all but is the perfect basic for quite luxury, one white in silk, double layer, with not detail on the back and one coverage coated sleeveless in beige that can be very versatile from evening piece that you wear by itself to more dress coat element where you show just a small part of it. And here are my two bonus pieces. Bonus because they have some of the qualities to be quite luxury but are a bit more special. This blue rib turtleneck is the typical elevated basic, which means a garment that looks regular. These two bonus pieces are examples of how I, according to my taste and wardrobe availability, would stretch the quiet luxury to my own lifestyle. I believe it's really important to find your way through fashion trends, but let me know what do you think and how do you feel about that black bottom in corduroy fabric and white lucero turtleneck. So to this unbeatable black and white combination, you can add a beige or warm brown cardigan for that traditional look. 
same pants and top but this time layered with black satin shirt. With the black on the bottom and top you create unification and bring the monochrome keyword from the quite luxury style but you diversify it with the fabrics, pants in cotton corduroy, shirt in satin, the silhouette is really relaxed but not too loose and the popping white turtleneck remains as a detail. Just make sure it doesn't pop on cuffs as the goal is to have one small accent area. To highlight this monochrome even more and the small detail, I added a black wool hat, a wool coat, neutral color bag and we are ready to be photographed for street look from Fashion Week. Outlook number 3, same pants, same lisa top, but this time layered with the leather shirt. I like the vibe of freedom and space the outfit gives. With the exact same pair of pants, just by changing the top, we move away from the informal. This time, we style it with a double layer silk top with a knot on the back. I really like the comfortable outlook and how nothing is too tight or too wide. To go out, just add a wool coat. Alternatively, you can style it with a white leather shirt. It's a more useful vibe. Corduroy pants, coated skin tone, spaghetti strap top. By the way, my corduroy pants have a metal zipper in the central front. The discreetly shiny top I would like to style them with, brown leather shirt. I like it with black pants, but ideally I would combine it with the same style knee length of shorts. Something like that. I love it with the cardigan as well. Let's go for some monochrome looks. The reason why I picked the total black is to give a standout to the shapes, volumes and lengths. Out of the fabrics are very varied. Rib sleeveless, satin shirt and corduroy pants. And now to make it my own quite luxury, I button up the shirt and add a comfortable cable knit sweater in warm brown nuance. Look how nice this bold neckline sits on the black satin shirt. All the details are in the workmanship of the shirt. I do like it, however, I would have preferred to have the same color and fabric pants or knee length shorts. So this outlook includes one of the two special pieces. If you feel you want to have something more sparkling on your quite luxury style, the best option to bring it is through elevated basics. It is a little too tight than the regular concept of quite luxury, but styled with the black white pants, it's a risk I personally am willing to take. Three garments, three fabrics, three colors, one look. It's more new age quite luxury. If you're a color block lover, this one is the best way to interpret it in quite luxury. Monochrome top and bottom with a touch of color on the extremities. In my case, it is cream on the top part of the ribbed turtleneck. To complete the look, same or similar colors called and accessories. I like it better without the back actually. Beige nuances for a wool skirt coat and even details in color block ribbed turtleneck. Great option for daily wear, casual or more formal events. V-neck, comfortable cardigan and skirt in neutral colors. The length of the cardigan is just as needed to cover the waist because the idea is to eliminate body shape. The only focus point is a deep neckline that doesn't look vulgar on a small bust. And for a more relaxed outlook or Swiss chalet edition, I would add the neckline sweater and wool skirt. Keywords, free time, joy of movement, sitting next to the fire, hot chocolate at 4 p.m. Toto neutral, back on the monochrome track, all the details are in the fabric patterns, like in this rib top. The fabrics as this double side and wool skirt and lens. Shirt, pay attention to this, in front follow straight lines, as diagonal straight line in the skirt and the lines in the rib pattern, but in the back is shaped in a rounded pattern. Here, details in lines are the key to quiet luxury. I like how the coat highlights all these lines as well. White poplin shirt will always be on track. The detail is in the cuff, it's the double length and needing fold, which talks about attention to tailoring. When you add a full length coat, the shirt almost feels like a tunic and reminds you a lot of the last catwalks. Neutral maxi dress, keywords. Drop shoulder, total length, split. By the way, if you ask yourself why I have two different socks, that's why. 
long story short one is a special sock for surgery and the other one's normal random sock by the way i'm still not walking properly so it was fun filming this part i wish you to be brave and live in a new world in which we wear garments that will remain even when our youth is gone even after us thank you for watching